The boys and I have kicked off a new venture, starting in the state's rugged northwest. I don't think you could get a more exposed piece of land in Tasmania than this paddock. Regional long table lunches serving only local produce. That is regional cuisine at its heart. Our first event didn't turn much of a profit, but believe it or not, we're ready to go again. Oh, I needed that. I used to be a big city food critic, but I gave up that life and moved to a small farm in country Tasmania. I've been learning how to produce my own food so I can know and trust what I eat. But just when I thought I had it all figured out, along comes Sadie, our boy Headley, and responsibility. So now I'm farming for three. How hard can it be? In the seat pocket in front of you, you'll find a safety on board card, which contains vital information on what you should do in the unlikely event of an emergency. Flinders Island. Uh, we're, we're planning our next regional lunch, and the first one we did, the northwest of Tasmania, was was you know, a, a success for many reasons. Uh, we didn't make much money, and what we've learned is that we actually need to go to the region, do proper research before we actually hold the event. We've got two days to find a venue, find exactly what sort of produce they've got. Out that window, though, is the most incredible vista of a really mountainous island. The challenge we've set ourselves is to source all our ingredients from the island and put on a long table lunch that our guests will never forget in a spectacular location. Hey, mate. Hey, and to help us find our feet, an old mate of Nick's, Raoul Harper, is hooking us up with the Flinders Island Deputy Mayor, Mick Grimshaw. He should know his way around. Yeah. You're in the Gold Coast of Tasmania, so... <laughs> There's a lot of territory to cover in our two days on the island and top priority is finding a location. So to get the lay of the land, Mick takes us to one of Flinders' highest vantage points. So we're going to follow the pastoral company as we leave here, round up the east coast, finish at a bitter, and then head up to uh, Killacranky where it's um, you know, basically seafood heaven. We're asking 170 bucks a ticket, so it needs to be pretty damn special. And Frosty's Beach, about 40 k's up the east coast, is just that. Absolutely spectacular, Mick, this place. I mean, I just... There's some pretty big boxes ticked here for us. There's some that aren't ticked at all, like no power, no plumbing, no hot, hot water. You know, we, yeah. can, we can get all those things here, water, power. I mean, where else would you rather be on Flinders than a paddock that goes right down to the ocean? It's heartbreakingly beautiful, but being so isolated would make it a huge logistical challenge. <laughs> it's got no facilities. It's bloody, I don't know, 40 minutes or something from, from the nearest town. And as we learnt the hard way in the northwest, weather is also a major consideration. It's going to be tough to find a location that meets all of our requirements. But Mick reckons he's got a few good options for us to check out. What are we looking at here? There's a possible use of the shed up here which is actually uh, owned by the abalone diver. But an ugly concrete bunker doesn't quite fire the imagination. And the Amida Sports Hall is dry in terms of rain and also character. We can have a game of badminton. Further east, Anna Anderson's old shearing shed seems more promising. The only catch, 600 woolly jumpers are standing in our way. We'll just ask them politely to step aside. Luckily, my herding instincts are second to none. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Piece of cake. Oh, that's a shed. I just adore these old shearing sheds, you know, these slatted boards, the smell of them. It's not a bad wet weather option. Just check out the kitchen. But kitchen is a bit of an overstatement. Coffee facilities. What do you reckon about this place, guys, in terms of setup? Look, I and... think it'd be difficult. You don't want people to pay loads of bucks without that being, you know? Yeah. A little bit schmicko. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's go and check out the next place. 
Everywhere we go, we're struck by the natural wonder of Flinders Island. Cut off from the mainland, game of all descriptions are free to roam. And it doesn't take long for Ross to spot a few going about their business by the side of the road. The thought of wild game has got us all excited. And every second paddock has got a flock of the island's famed Cape Barren geese. It's a protein paradise. Unfortunately, we can't say the same for the veggies. There's bugger all here. But we have heard a rumour that the local school has a productive garden. And according to teach John Hizard, his green thumb students might just be able to grow to order. I mean, you know, look, the kids are, um, are really the, the growers here. And you know, if we get our skates on yeah. you know, and the weather stays like this, I reckon there's a good chance between now and then we could sort you out. Well, that sounds promising. We still don't have a location, but we've covered a lot of miles. And it's time to take stock over a quiet drink. Too bad, eh? And a sample of the local produce. Wow. wow. What's on top? Is that right. calamata? Olive, olive tapenade. Olive oh, tapenade. Fantastic. But as well as the lamb, Mick also brings a few of his own concerns to the table. Well, I've got a couple of questions for you, given you know our egalitarian little community and yeah. relatively humble. Do you reckon they'll uh, they'll balk at the 170 ticket? The produce that you're producing is something that they can have at their fingertips day. all every day. Yeah, so it's you know, they, they go and that. get lobster, they go and get abalone, they go yeah. and get lamb, yeah. and they do it themselves. You know? Yeah, it's you a hard to, sell, isn't it? You have yeah. to convince them. And they've never uh, had to pay for it. For anyway. In that respect, I think it's a hard sell. That's probably where I'm coming from. Yeah. yeah. No. Mick knows the local appetite better than we do. And with the location yet to be determined, maybe this isn't such a great idea after all. Back on the road the next morning, the ticket price has got us all worried. We, we know that to make this work, we have to charge a certain amount of money. Even if we dropped it like 50 or 60 bucks. The problem is that, you know, we're guaranteed 30 to 50 of the locals that'll pay whatever it is. We need another 50 to 60, 70 people on top of that to make the event pay for itself. The bottom line is, we can't afford to do it for any less, but we're going to have to deliver one hell of an event to make it worth their money. And if we can't find a decent location today, we might just have to pull the plug. There's just one place left to look at. What a setup. Hello. Hello. This is Robin Lorraine from Partridge Farm. We've got Matthew. Matt. Matthew, nice to see you. Hello. Stunning place. This is the most brilliant place. They overlook this bay. Uh, they've got an orchard, a vineyard. Dorper sheep are shedding sheep, so they're just bred for meat, so obviously going to be really sweet flavoured. They've got deer. This could be an absolutely brilliant uh, place to get a lot of stuff, if not a great venue. We're just going to see if we can find a, somewhere we can lay tables. Well, which way is the wind going to come from, Rob? The wind, we don't get much wind here. I've got to say, standing here right now, this weather, this view, this would be the absolute perfect place. And it gets even so better. How's this for Mission HQ? <laughs> Is hey, that... boys, come and check this out. Bloody hell, look at that. We've landed in paradise. Oh, yeah. We, we yeah. may not have Jesus to look any further. The one-stop shop. All we need now is a wet weather backup. What do you reckon about that, Ross? Not big enough, probably. Unless you stretched marquees out the front and extended that way, you could do. The garage isn't perfect, but overall, it's the best location we've seen. And Rob and Lorraine have offered us a great deal. We're in. But with concerns about the ticket price, we'll have to knock up an event that exceeds expectations. A huge challenge on an isolated island. There we go, see so if you can grab that one there. Is there any chance of snakes in these holes? Uh, I think you're pretty right today, I think. Jesus. Two months have passed since our Flinders recce, and our paddock long table lunch event is finally upon us. Nick has packed up every piece of cooking equipment we own and had it shipped ahead of us to Flinders on a pallet. By the time we're back on the island, we've taken over 100 bookings, which is more than enough. And we've now got just five days to make it all happen. We've planned a huge menu based around some unique Flinders produce, including Cape Barren geese, mutton birds, and of course, wallaby and lamb. And as usual, the to-do list is as long as all our arms put together. Well, it's lovely and all, but sorry guys, we've got a lot of work to do. I'm starting to freak out a bit. Well, I've got my list sorted. I've left a message for the lady who loves lettuce. I've spoken to a crayfisherman. I've spoken to people about mutton birding. 
I've got two kitchen hands. You spoke to one. How about Nick? Still haven't found eggs, still haven't found green tomatoes. We're yeah. light on vegetables. We've got no idea what's happening with dessert at this stage. The pallet's on route? Well, I think so. We need to ring and find out exactly. Where it was, it was all a bit vague about where it arrives. Everyone keeps telling me it'll be fine. It'll be but, fine. Yeah, but is it delivered? Do we pick it up and exactly, everything? Oh, exactly okay. right. Oh, uh, yeah, g'day, Samantha. My name's Nick from A Common Ground. We sent a pallet of stuff. Do you know when it arrives in Flinders Island? And While Nick tracks down our cooking gear, I'm wondering why we haven't heard anything from the school about our veggies. Better go investigate. Hello. Hey, John. Have you harvested already or has nice. it grown? Um, well, yeah, welcome to uh, the summertime here, you know. Wow. You know, as you can see, we've got a very poor showing of uh, radish and beetroots and... The story is, the weather has been like this for quite a few weeks now. We had one week of absolutely beautiful for growing, but the previous six weeks were rubbish. Have it been a bit like this? Yeah, right. It's not all bad news. There is a bit of silver beet and just enough salad, but that's about all. I don't think that went all that well, to mm. be honest. Wasn't much there, was there? That's very disappointing. It's not a great start to our island adventure, but it's time to settle into our digs. With only four days up our sleeves to gather all our produce, we'll have to come up with a plan which lets us cover more ground. So to double our luck, the next morning we split up, with Ross hunting down some game, while Nick and I hit the water. One of the things they do down in Flinders is go button birding. I'm pretty excited to see how it's done. We're heading to Big Dog Island. This is an island straight off the south that's in front of us now. Mutton birding is part of Aboriginal culture in Tasmania, and crews move to the island for the duration of the five-week season every year. So while Nick heads off to the southern tip of the island to find cockles, which he'll be tossing in a seafood broth, I'm heading into the rookery to check out birding for myself. Mutton birds spend most of their lives on the wing, migrating some 15,000 kilometres to Alaska before returning to islands like this to raise their chicks. And the chicks are what birders like rookery boss Aaron Maynard are looking for, deep in burrows under the tussock grass. How many are there on the island? Uh, about 2.5 million, I think. 2.5 million? Yeah. Okay. You hold that pressure there and just sort of flick it so, so you bring your wrist back. Yeah. It's a quick death. All the same, I'm not that keen on sticking my hand down a hole that's just as likely to house a tiger snake as a mutton go. bird. But Aaron reckons while I'm here, I have to have a go. There we go, see if you can grab that one there. Is there any chance of snakes in these holes? Uh, I think you, you're pretty right today, I think. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm getting bitten by it. <laughs> Oh. But finally, I've got the downy little bugger. Hey, see? Yeah, that'll do, yeah. And just give him a nice quick jolt. That's him. That was first hit. He's done. done. Beautiful. Professional. <laughs> that yeah, was I'm not, great. I'm not sure I'm looking for this sort of career move. <laughs> There's something slightly, um, I don't know, slightly disconcerting. I'm not sure if I feel right about this. In my head, I know it's, you know, no different. I guess part of me says, look, this is a young bird and it was about to fly away in two or three weeks. But that's the reality of nearly every bird we eat. They're all killed when they're still immature. And in a factory farm, it would be a lot younger than this. And up here, it's part of a long tradition, as Elder Rex Burgess can attest. How old were you when you started birding? Actually doing physical work, uh, burden, it was nine years old. So more or less had to work my way. Then I got up to 14 years old, I was rookie boss at the age of 14. At 14? And I uh, actually had some of the older fellas under me. Yeah, it's more or less in our blood and I'll keep coming back for some reason. <laughs> Which is good to try and keep the culture going. But I have heard that mutton bird can taste very fishy. To find out, Aaron's had these roasting over coals for about five hours. Pull them apart and dig in. Mm. Mm. Nice, eh? Mm. It is. 
The closest thing I can think of is that most people would have tried would be something like duck. The meat itself, I don't think has a fishy flavour. The fat does, but not unattractive. Mm. Mm -hmm. We'll take 60 birds from the morning's catch, but we'll have to come up with a quicker way to cook them. And it looks like I'm not the only one with an island mission accomplished. There you go. More water than cockles by the look of it. <laughs> Pass it over. While Nick and I have been off on our island retreat, Ross has been hard at work too, shooting Cape Barren geese on a licensed property. You've been busy? Yeah, have been. We've got eight. Oh, well we've done. Eight, but we're huge. doing them batches. They're huge, aren't they? Beautiful. So they dress out really well, but look at the feathers as well. They're beautiful, mm, aren't they? Stunning. Enough meat on them for us if we get yeah. the tent? Beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, definitely. That's most of the big ticket produce sourced, leaving only the wallaby that Ross will shoot tonight. But we still need to locate the pallet with all our cooking gear. And every Flinders Islander has a different idea of where we should be looking. But Mick's pretty certain. Now we know where it is. It's in the big shed. The shipping containers everywhere out there. Oh, none in here. What's on it that we can't replace? Apart from cooking gear. We're looking for Maybe this bloke knows something. You'll find it. It will turn up. It can only be here or there. We're going around in circles. I reckon Ross went the right way. But it's not a complete waste of time. Oh, yeah. It's like a big shed. Along the way, we finally found some vegetables. Oh, spiffy yeah. spuds, good-looking garlic, yeah. and perfect pumpkins. Further south, we nab a few figs, grab the garfish... They're going to be perfect. ..and pick grapes and vine leaves from the Univale vineyard. Still no sign of that pallet, but it's time to get our haul of produce over to Partridge Farm and figure out how the hell we're going to cook it. Oh, I don't believe it. Matthew, look what's in the shed. Here's our pallet. This is what it looks like. I thought it was actually a pallet with stuff on. No, it's been unloaded. I bet it's been here since Tuesday. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet this is Mick's handiwork. But however it got here, it's a relief to have it. And it means we can finally get our kitchen set up. Our lifesaver. And with the timely delivery of our rented gear, we can lay out our paddock table. The only level spot is 300 metres from the kitchen. We'll have to rejig it. Yeah, yeah. But there's no other choice. Eight, ten, eleven. And once the table is laid, we can finally get to what we know best. Food, glorious food. Ross is just finishing skewering the mutton bird. And because we don't have the five hours that it took to cook them on the island, what we're going to do, we're going to poach them in um, some stock, a game stock that uh, we've already made up, and then cook them over a fire tomorrow. Tick. 24 hours out, we're a little behind schedule and prepping as fast as we can. I reckon we'll get there, Ross. But as we season lamb, wrap fish and whisk honeycomb, the locals duck for cover as the heavens threaten to put a dampener on things. Was that forecast? This was 10% chance of a shower. Yeah, I would hate to see what 35% is. You guys reckon we can't put 100 people in that shed, for sure? That shed would need, like, a, d a full day to clean out. Yeah, yeah, which we haven't, which we haven't done. done. The only other option would be a wholesale move to that and emit a showground, which is just in a big, empty hall yeah. that is out of the weather. I don't think moving food for 100 people that's halfway through being cooked yeah. is an option. Back at our digs for the night, it's getting worse, and Nick's worried about cancellations. Are you getting nervous? Mm. Do you think we're going to lose any? I need to confirm everyone who's coming and I need to sort out who's paid and not paid. Check out this. Mountains in cloud, flash flooding on the island. I can't believe it. I don't know, it's strongly reminiscent of the uh, North West. All I know is that we've got 100 plus people booked. I don't know what it'll be like tomorrow. Better than this, I hope. The day of the big event, and it just wouldn't be tazzy if the weather was even a tiny bit predictable. But very exciting driving in, seeing stars, still sunny. There's still a ton of work to get through, but as kickoff approaches, things are going along swimmingly. Oh no! The crayfish haven't arrived. Hey guys, here you crays. Sorry, they're late. We're short three pairs of legs. I'm trying to be in six places at once. And. That fire pit's a Himalayan trek away, isn't it? It's going to be interesting when we're doing the serving. Serving? That means staff. Our problem today is our prep kitchen is just where you saw, and people are eating here. A second wine glass, which aren't here yet. 
So you can probably do something like that if you can just get all of that done. Any questions? Fantastic. But Ross has got it all figured out and it seems pretty straightforward. Garfish is going to be done here. Yep. So these ones here, you only need half up here and half down for the mutton birds. Easy. They're all arriving. I'm feeling a bit more confident now. We've got, we seem to have a team organised to meet and greet. <laughs> it's a walk in the park for our punters as they make their way down to the paddock and the first course. Raw crayfish soused in moonshine and verjuice on a wasabi leaf. You'll get that wasabi kick at the end. As they settle in, it's time to get proceedings underway. Thank you um, so much for coming, everybody. What we've done is given you a list of our, um, some of our producers and you've got the menu, which helps to describe what we tried to do, which is bring what we discovered on Flinders Island in terms of food to you. The only things we've brought in are the salt, pepper, a tiny bit of sugar and some olive oil. Please relax, enjoy the afternoon. That's all we want to say. Thank you. Thank you for coming. With pleasantries out of the way, the race is on. And there's a lot of ground to cover. Hey, mate, um, just needed to know what platters I can use for the mutton bird. Which is about a 300 metre walk from here. I feel buggered. This leisurely stroll is one we'll be enjoying about 48 times today. And we're trapped a deer proof fence away from our diners in the only place Farmer Rob would let us dig a fire pit. Second course, green tomato broth with green lip abalone, crayfish, cockles and samphire. Followed by garfish, wrapped in vine leaves and lemon. As the seafood hits the tables, cooking the mutton bird presents its own challenges. I've been to Annapurna Base Camp and it was easier than this. <laughs> really hot. But eventually, we get them out through our fence slot serving system. Patent pending. Great, thanks, Jeremy. But the question is, have we impressed the true connoisseurs? Mutton birders, Aaron and Steve. Lovely. Couldn't cook them any better. That's really good. Nice and moist. That's a huge relief. But there's no time to relax. Simon, clear the deck. In the culinary Olympics that ensue, events include women's relay, 400 metre sprint. Can you bring him nine? Right. Mixed hurdles <laughs> and the under 12s egg and spoon race, featuring school leaf salad. Oh. By 3 pm, we've collectively covered 38 kilometres, and we're only halfway through the menu with the Cape Baron goose up next. Have we got everything we need to send the goose out? No, we don't have the comfy. Comfy should be on a tray down there, mate. Oh, yeah, just got it. Right. But there seems to be a mix up. This is the wallaby and hay. No, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. No, this is... We put the goose to one side and get the wallaby out first. The wallaby's been slow baked under hay and dressed with Green Island herbs. It's a dark red gamish colour and it is really lovely. And hot on its heels, our goose is finally cooked. The next sausage and the sauce is coming down now with Ryan. Two sausages per plate. Cape Baron sausage and confit legs set off with sour grapes and stuffed goosenecks. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Hang on, hang on. Get this on. Get this on. No, stop. 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 Tiny bit on each one. Come back. This, this dish from start to finish has been difficult. I've just forgotten the, yeah, liquid. the gooseneck. You can see these Goose. goosenecks on here. Very different looking sausage. Don't fucking stand in my way. Gordon Ramsay says, you know, everything I know, Matthew taught me. Thank you. <laughs> Tempers might be fraying behind the scenes, but at the table, our guests couldn't be happier. And best of all, word is we've hit the mark with our treatment of the local delicacies. I don't think anyone on the island has had goose this way before. Yeah. And I think people have responded to that. People like that about it, so yeah. that's good. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. What we're really pleased about is that people paid a lot of money to come to this event. I mean, the locals it made it quite clear that, that they thought this was overpriced. So we had to turn it on. We had to do something that they weren't familiar with. With the table, I think we've done that. With the food, we've done that. You know, the day is spectacular. We've still got one more course to come and, you know, they're all hopefully really happy. With the bonfire raging, it's a massive relief to see dessert on its way and Master Chef Ross finally off his feet. Bubbly and figs with apple and pear compote, sabayon and honeycomb, is a fitting end to one hell of a paddock lunch, but one that has tested us every step of the way. Well done, mate. Cheers. Well done, Evo. Well done, Russell. Thank you.
Good. That was amazing. I didn't think we'd all be talking at this part. No, actually, I'm surprised. <laughs> but the final word goes to the deputy mayor. This is something Flinders Island's never seen before. They will never get an experience like what they got here, and that, is, that was to die for. Uh, no worries. No worries. It's, it's good to salute you. Our pleasure. Thank you. As the sun sinks low and the band plays on, the locals start pairing up for the chilly night ahead. And we're just a little bit amazed that we actually pulled it off. The call of the wild sees me searching for feral food, free for the taking, if you can catch it. That's a gorgeous one. That's a nice little stream trout. Yeah. This guy's incredible. And even my farm has a few tasty surprises. Yeah, so with the hawthorn, the idea now is to sugar to taste. A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. Sweet as. 